The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. Jesus entering into Jerusalem on a donkey. Riding a donkey, not a horse, but a donkey. So we're going to talk about this a little bit. I was asking the Lord to show me something new. Because, you know, you just about every, every Palm Sunday in, in the past, we talk about Palm Sunday. But uh, I wanted a, a new revelation, and I um, I trust that um, you're listening, you're paying attention, because I mean I was asking myself the question, why did Jesus enter into Jerusalem riding a donkey? What's the purpose of that? Uh, and when all the crowds and disciples, they were cheering him, they were shouting, uh, you know, I, I want to know, I want to understand, what, what's the purpose of the shouting? What's the purpose of him entering into Jerusalem as king? as a conquering king. And only shortly after, he's going to go to the cross. But do you remember the time that Joshua wanted to enter Jericho? And uh, they could not enter in until the shout was made. So, I believe that Jesus was preparing to enter into a region where the devil is and the kingdom of Satan is. Because he wanted to shake up and tear down the kingdom of Satan. And therefore, the shout. Therefore, the walls came down when they shouted as they went around the walls and they shouted the shout of victory. Amen. Praise God. And that's the same thing with Jesus. He entered in into Jerusalem as king, triumphant king, when was his triumph done? It's when he went on the cross, went down to Hades, preached to the spirits in Hades, stripped the devil of his authority and power, and came back and rose from the dead. That's when the victory literally took place. And that's why the shout in Jerusalem the week before. Hallelujah. That's why we ought to shout. If you think you're going through trials, maybe you ought to shout. A shout of victory. Hallelujah. So we're going to read in um, Matthew chapter 21. Now the arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem is recorded in all four Gospels. But I want to read from this one here, from the NOG translation, the Names of God Bible translation. Uh, you might ask why particularly this translation. I don't know. I found it and I, I liked it. I liked some of it. Praise the Lord. 
Well, I, I just wanted to come up with a new translation that you're not familiar with. <laughs> Maybe you ought to check it out in the future. When they came near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Yeshua, see that's why I wanted the translation. Yeshua, or it could be Y-A, so Yeshua or Yahshua doesn't make any difference in the Hebrew. It's the same meaning, Yahshua, which is Yah Yahweh, is Savior. Yahweh the Savior. God the Savior. That's his name. Jesus' name is God's name. Because Jesus is God. He's not just a man. He's a God and he's a man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Did you say amen or a woman? <laughs> Yeshua sent two disciples ahead of him. He said to them, go into the village ahead of you. You will find a donkey tied there and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him, like he knew it was going to be a him, not to her. Tell him that the Lord needs them. See, this was already pre-planned by God. It was pre-planned in heaven. The choosing of a donkey, a young donkey, where Jesus would ride into Jerusalem, was pre-planned 500 years before that shows in the prophecy of Zechariah. I mean, it was pre-planned before the foundations of the world, of course. But it was pre-planned by God, predestined. It was going to happen. And, and uh, uh, Jesus was going with it because he knew there was going to be a need for a shout of victory, whether the people understood it or not. But there was going to be a shouting Amen. of victory. This happened so that what the prophet had said came true. So Jesus was fulfilling prophecy. Tell the people of Zion, your king is coming to you. He is gentle, riding on a donkey, on a colt, a young pack animal. This is a prophecy. That was given. The disciples did as Yeshua had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their coats on them for Joshua to sit on. Most of the people spread their coats on the road. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and that followed him was shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna. And Hosanna means what? Save us. They were shouting Hosanna because he was going to save them and us and all of us. We all got saved when Jesus went to the cross. And rose from the dead. There was a victory shout. Did they know it? I don't think so. They were talking about restoring the kingdom to Israel at that time. They were not talking about salvation of their souls. But nevertheless, God used that to bring a shout of victory. The spiritual victory, which was the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. His suffering, 
his going to the cross, his burial, death, and resurrection. Save us, son of David. That's what they shouted. And then they shouted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Yeshua came into Jerusalem, the whole city was in an uproar. People were asking, who is this? The crowd answered, this is the prophet Yeshua from Nazareth in Galilee. That's as much as the crowd knew. Who do you think Jesus is? He asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Do you realize who Jesus is? He is God manifest in the flesh. God became flesh and dwelt among us. Praise God. Yeshua, verse 12, went into the temple courtyard. I like what he did. And that's his intention. In the future, whatever he does then, he's, he's intending to do that in all of us. Because he goes into the temple. Now you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And what's he going to do? He's going to go in and he's going to overturn things that are against him that are not according to the kingdom of God. And he's going to throw things out of your heart that don't belong to him. Because he wants to sanctify you and make you holy and make you grow up as a Christian. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus came to cleanse the temple. In fact, he's cleansing us by his word on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Isn't that true? He sent his word to cleanse us. To sanctify us. And uh, if you let him, he'll do a good work in you. Praise God. So he went into the temple courtyard and threw out everyone who was buying and selling there. He overturned the money changers tables and the chairs of those who sold pigeons. He told them, Scripture says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, and, but you are turning it into a gathering place for thieves. So that's what he's doing with your heart. That's what, what he's doing with every one of us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he's come to do a work in this temple. In your temple. Amen. The blind and lame came to him in the temple courtyard and he healed them. And when the chief priests and experts in Moses' teachings saw the amazing miracles he performed and the children shouting in the temple courtyard, Hosanna to the son of David. These religious people were irritated. They said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? Yeshua replied, Yes, I do. Have you never read from the mouths of little children and infants you have created praise. What about praising God? What about shouting unto the Lord? It's a shout of victory, folks. It's not an empty shout. It's, it's a real shout. It's a focused shout. 
It's a shout that's going to get you results. Shouting unto the Lord, shouting the praises of God, crying out with praises. So he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. We see here the four accounts, the four gospels. All of, all of this has been mentioned in all four gospels. They're all very similar in telling the story of Jesus entering into Jerusalem as a king. And this happened shortly before Passover. Uh, what we, the Jews call Pesach. Passover, Pesach, the Hebrew word for, it, it means to skip. The word Pesach Pasach is to skip over. What did the angel do? He skipped over every house that had blood on it, on the doorposts and the lintels. He skipped over. That was called the Feast of Passover. Okay. Actually, I would call it the skip over. Because that's what the Hebrew says. Skip over. The skipping. The feast of skipping. Don't skip church, but skip. <laughs> See, this is a time that people gathered from all over the area, all over Palestine and other countries. It was a feast of Passover. And they were just there at the right time, at the right place, to shout praises unto the King of kings and Lord of lords. And to agree with him that he will have the victory. And that he will knock down the kingdom of Satan with his death, burial, and resurrection. It was a foretelling. of what was going to take place. So all four Gospels tell us that Jesus rode into town on a young, on a young donkey. Zechariah 9 says this in prophecy, Rejoice, Greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Even prophesied 500 years, 500 years before it happened, he is telling the people to shout. Are you ready to shout? You're going through some issues and trouble? Shout praise unto the Lord. Unto the King of kings and Lord of lords. Shout praises unto him. Sing praises unto him. Sing a new song unto him. Who lives forever and ever. And he is the one who gave you life. And he gives us life. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly. And riding upon a donkey and upon a colt, the fall of a donkey, a young donkey. <clears throat> so this was given 500 years before it happened by the prophet Zechariah. When Jesus came into the city, the people shouted. What they shout? Hosanna to the son of David. Mark repeats a similar statement. 
Hosanna in the highest. In Luke's account, we are told that the people shouted with a loud voice. In case you missed it. I mean, you get bent out of shape when somebody shouts with a loud voice. It's okay. I mean, uh, some people get bent out of shape when somebody says amen to something that was said by the preacher. You know, some other people say, well, you know, why are they disrupting what is being said? I can't understand what he's, what the preacher is saying because they said amen. <laughs> Somebody said amen. <clears throat> Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. John 12, 13. They took branches of palm trees, went forth to meet him and cried, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. Now, ah, that's another revelation. He comes in the name of the Lord. How did he come in the name of the Lord? He had the name of the Lord. His name is God's name. He comes in the name of the Lord. Yahshua. That's God's name. Old Testament, New Testament is God's name. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He carries God's name. Did you ever wonder? When, now it gets a little tricky here. But you got to listen with your heart, not with your mind. Okay? When, when uh, Jesus said, I want you to go out and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Did you ever think of that? What's his name? How many gods do we have in heaven? One God, right? Not three. One. Baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, I'm going to stick with Matthew 28. If you want to stick with your old understanding, that's fine. But I, I want a new revelation. What do you mean? His name is Jesus. Yeah, sure. That's the name of the Father and of the Son. The Father, Yahweh, is in Jesus' name. And the Son and the Holy Spirit. All three manifestations of God have a name. And his name is Yahshua. Go ahead, tickle somebody next to you now. <laughs> his name is Jesus, Yahshua. That's why sometimes some people don't want to use, uh, use the name Jesus, they want to use Yahshua. Because it does mean something to them. I mean, you don't blame them. We anglicized everything. We anglicized Jesus' name from Yeshua to Jesus. How did that happen? His name. He's a mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the father of eternity. Who, what's his name? Jesus. Yahshua. 
That's why when you, when, you, uh, when you pray in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Why? Because that's God's name, folks. His name is Yahweh. Amen. Yahweh the Savior. But he says here, Blessed is the King of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. He came with God's name. He carries God's name, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Well, Pastor, I don't know. You're getting into too deep into things. Why you want me to stay uh, on the surface, or you want to tell uh, know the truth? It's all in Jesus. It's all. The power is in the name. And they were shouting, and they. they, they uh, Jesus tells them, if you don't shout, then the rocks will. Luke 19, 40. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. You don't, you don't shout, the stones will shout. Praise God. The same time, there were celebration in the streets of Jerusalem, where the religious leaders were getting angry at the same time, asking Jesus to have those disciples in the temple be quiet. Why, why are they even raising their voices? They shouldn't be saying amen and hallelujah. Do you ever, you ever go to a church where they don't want you to shout? They don't want you to say hallelujah. They don't want you to raise your hands up to the Lord. Not in this church. You could stand on your head if you want to. Amen. You want a flag? And, and uh, you know, flag? Flagging? Waving the flag. Yeah, that's, that's a shout of victory, folks. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. If you would like to support our ministry, please text NTC Gives to 77977. And please join us each week for Sunday school at 9 and service at 1030. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.